Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be looking at the FL Studio 21 mixer. We are going to be looking at the controls, how to use them, and how to organize the mixer in a lazy way that will help beginners understand it. So if you are new to FL Studio, make sure to watch this video to the end and feel free to check out other beginners tutorials in our channel. The link is in the description. The first thing we're going to be looking at is the current track. This shows the volume level of the current track that you are working on. It is just like a big meter with more details than the little one on a normal mixer insert track. Next to it is the master track. This is where all other mixer insert tracks are rooted to. This is where you add master effects and mix bus effects to. Anything you add here affects all the tracks and also all audio coming in or out of your door. The rest here are just normal mixer insert tracks. This is where you can send your audio, instrument or record a sound. They are all routed to the master channel. There are about 125 of them, and they are all numbered in case you want to send something into them. If you right-click on any mixer insert track, you will see options that can be used to customize it, like rename, color, change icon and so on. It also has a meter that you can use to see what is going on on your track, or you can just use the meter on the current track because it's bigger. If you look closely, you will see that every mixer insert track has all these functions. These are the mixer track controls, and we are going to explain them one by one. The first thing here is the mute button that is used to mute or unmute a track. Next dial here is the panning. This is used to move an audio left or right. Then we have the level fader that is used to control the volume. An invert phase that is used to flip the sign of a wave form so that the negative peaks become positive and the positive peaks become negative. Then we have the swap stereo that swaps the right and left. Next is the stereo separation, which is used to make an audio wider or thinner. Next, we have the disable all effect. This is useful when you just want to hear your track without the plugins that was added to them. Next, we have the plug-in delay compensation. Then we have the arm record switch. When this is on, any internal or external audio source routed to the track will be recorded. And then we have the send switch that is used to send audio to another track. This is called side chaining. Each track here has its own individual track inspector, which is at the right-hand side by default. The track inspector is where you add your effects, like your EQ, your compressors, your delays, and so on. In the track inspector, we have the option to add up to 10 effects, and you can mute the effect here, and you can reduce or increase the wetness and dryness of the effect here. On the inspector, we have the audio input and the audio output, and then this little equalizer for a quick cut and boost. Although I advise loading up an equalizer, now we're going to look at how to send audio into the mixer. To send audio from the channel rack, all you need to do is scroll on this box and assign the track to any mixer insert track using the numbers on the insert track. To send audio from the playlist, just double click on the clip, scroll up or down in this box and choose the number you want. You can resize the mixer from the top vertically or from the side. Most times when you resize it, some functions may appear or disappear, and it's not a problem like I thought it was when I started using FL Studio. Up here, we have some controls that are used to organize the mixer track, like we have the mixer menu that is used to organize the mixer, and it also contains options like view, plug-in delay compensation, linking, routing, ducking, and so on. Next thing here is the multi-touch controls that allows multi-touch movement of fader, and so on. Then we have the meter wave view that is used to change the meter either to a dB meter or a waveform view depending on your preference. Next is the extra mixer track properties. This one is used to move the track inspector right or left depending on your preference. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Turn on notifications for more tutorials and keep grinding.